Well, I was just talking with Sister Pam, you know, Goya, you know, our, our missionary from, from uh, Nigeria. And her mission just continues. Uh, she had family here this last weekend, a couple of weeks, actually, going back to May. And uh, I didn't know this, but one of the, your nephews was not saved. Actually, se several of them are not saved yet. And um, one of them, uh, Jordan, came to Christ during War Room. So he gave his heart to the Lord during, yeah, during that message, that movie, and then the message. And he gave his heart to the Lord at War Room. And it was funny, too, because as I was giving the invitation, I, th I saw him raise his hand. I, oh, how cute. He's rededicating his life. I just thought her family was Christian. Yeah, and it turns out, no, they were not. And so he just gave his heart to the Lord. He's the oldest one, the taller one. Uh, yeah, so praise God. But uh, you guys are here <clears throat> because um, we're about to start a new series called Switch on Your Brain. And so I just wanted to give you like a brief like introduction to the series. And then Mark and Jay Lee are going to take it from there. And they'll talk about like a, a very important um, sort of leader's briefing for us, which would be appropriate for any series, but particularly maybe for this one. Let's pray. Lord, we just take this moment right now to just, um, as we always do, welcome your presence and acknowledge you as the Holy Spirit who, who dwells within the, the temple of your choosing, which is our bodies. Thank you for making us the body of Christ. And so we just embrace your presence now, Holy Spirit, your love, your joy, and truth and revelation. We just pray right now and make us teachable and prepare us for the series to come. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, what's really exciting is this is not like one of those series that you can just sort of get like a box, you know, and then it has like all the materials in it. We actually had to create this one because Dr. Carolyn Leaf <clears throat> um, doesn't really do sermon series, you know, for churches. So we've had to like do our own research and primarily it's Pastor Teresa and myself who are rounding up all this material and trying to put it in such a way that in a way that we're, we're used to. So but praise God that is coming together. <clears throat> so we're going to do a series called Switch on Your Brain, which is the 21 day brain detox. Uh, it's a program within it. So the series is based on Romans 12.2. Everybody say Romans 12.2. Which says, be transformed in the renewing of your mind. So be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now, we know that that's what the Bible says. But one of the, one of the powerful dimensions about this series is that you're going to discover that neurological science supports what the Bible says. That's a cool thing. Because Dr. Leaf, she is a cognitive neurologist. So in other words, she's all about like helping people with brain trauma issues and stuff like that. And some of us have been brain trauma, you know. So we'll need her help, you know, during the series. But what she's, she's able to teach us is the science of the brain. And so there's going to be a lot of that kind of support to what we know from the scripture. And so we're going to go through six weeks of this. And the reason why we're here uh, today is because, uh, as, and this is something we pray for every series, by the way. We pray for this for every series, is that we're going to get revelation from the Lord. So it's not just like more science and more information, but you're also going to receive revelation from the Lord. How many of us know that it's revelation that will transform us? Because when you have an, an, a personal counter with him, that's what's going to transform you. For most of us, I would include myself and a bunch of us that went through the 21-day brain detox program, this was an exciting thing. It's a challenging thing to hear the Lord tell you, you know, about your issues. <laughs> but for some, the revelation could be deep and overwhelming. So what do you do when that happens? And that's why we have Mark and Jay Lee here to help us with that. So give them a big hand as they do that. Do you need to turn my thing off? It's on. Oh, oh hi. Hi. it's on. <laughs> Sorry, typically we wouldn't be uh, mic'd and up here, but they want to record this time. So they've asked that we be up here and we be mic'd 
even for a setting like this. So last time we were down there, yeah, like, yeah. on the stage, but <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, thank you all for being here. We'll, we'll try to keep this brief, and we brought some M Ms to tie you over to lunch or whatever you have next after this. So please help yourself, eat as many as you want. And uh, those were given to me, so it was like I can't eat all of this by myself. Both bags. People got it got out that I love peanut M Ms, but. Um, That's true. You know, as we prepare for the, the 21 day brain detox, um, as was shared, many people will have a very uplifting, very encouraging, very edifying experience. We're praying that everybody will. But for some people, the revelation that may come forth uh, may be more than they know how to um, walk through on their own. So as leaders, we want to be prepared. And by the way, how many of us know that we should know this regardless of the series, mm -hmm. right? As leaders, God is going to bring many people under our oversight and under our care that we will shepherd. Many of them will uh, come from you know, a, a amazing backgrounds and experiences, but every once in a while, God will bring people who are coming in with hurts, with baggages, with you know, past experiences and even traumas that they've gone through. And so how do we as leaders uh, steward the, the care that God has given us and how do we shepherd people through um, crises? you know, at, at some times. So, um, like I said, this isn't just because we're doing the brain detox, but the brain detox presented a very good opportunity for us to get on board with, with uh, understanding what to do because um, some things may come up, you know, and we don't say that to scare anybody, just a reality. But how many of us know we've gone through other series that had nothing to do with this kind of stuff, and in our own mm -hmm. Ohana group, all kinds of stuff came up. It had nothing to do with the series. So, it's just good for us to know this, know this at any time. Mm -hmm. And so um, to share a little more about what specifically prompted this uh, conversation, I'm going to have uh, Jaylee share a little bit because she went through the brain detox, had her own experiences with it, so she'll share. Yeah, so I um, <clears throat> heard about Dr. Leaf from mom and dad. They were talking about her. They constantly <laughs> talk about her because she's amazing. And I love the work that she does because I'm a counselor. and. Cognitive behavioral therapy is what I do constantly. With most diagnoses, cognitive behavioral therapy is what you do. And what she does is basically you do cognitive behavioral therapy on yourself. So I was like so excited to just start this. I started reading the book, but I didn't even finish reading the book. I just started doing the detox. And um, I was excited to go into it. And I went into it, um, you know, just kind of like, OK, what's going to happen? OK, let's just do it. And um, if you've never done it before, how many of you has, have done the detox? Okay, all right, so a few, um, but most of you haven't. So the first session is, um, is really deep. It's a time where you go before the Lord. It's very much, if you've ever done Nancy Carroll's prayer classes, um, it's a lot like the exchange window where God reveals something, um, a toxic thought is what she calls it. It could be called a lot of different things. God reveals it, the toxic thought that you're gonna be working on for these 21 days, and then you lay it at the foot of Jesus and then you ask him what healthy thought he wants to give back to you. It's amazing. It's, it's like an incredible experience. Um, of course, I'm bawling on my bed, like on my knees, bawling my eyes out because it's such an incredible experience. It was really overwhelming for me. I wasn't expecting it to be that emotional for me, um, but it was. It was crazy. And, um, and it was awesome, but it was also really hard. And I mean, you guys have experienced that, right? I mean, anytime that something is brought up in your life, something that's, that God wants to change, it's not easy. Um, and it was, it was really rough. And I will say the first week of the detox, I was trudging through. You're supposed to do it every day for, that takes about seven minutes. I had the app, it's really easy to do it. Um, but I was like forcing myself every day to do this. And it was like, what, what is going on? Like, why is it so hard for me? And it was just like going through mud every day and I didn't, sorry, I didn't know, um, I didn't think through like, you know, oh, what, what, what am I doing that I should change until the, the end of the week and I, I actually spoke with someone else who was also going through the brain detox a few days later um, and I realized, oh my gosh, this really is extremely important, which is so, you're gonna say, duh, Jay Lee, whenever I tell you, but basically God, God was just, he very clearly spoke to me. You are not, you stopped, because you do journaling during this time, I had replaced this detox time with my journaling devotion time with the Lord. And it was not good. I was not in a good place. I had come to a point where I was trying to do this detox in my own power. I was doing it as my own, because like, like I said, I do 
cognitive behavioral therapy, and a lot of times I do it. I do it. I mean, obviously, if someone is open to spiritual things in my counseling sessions, it's we're bringing in Bible verses, we're bringing in everything in prayer and God's power through it. But I always I said in the last session, in the last time we did this training last week, and I'll say it again: if you want a self-help session, go find it somewhere else. This is not a self-help like you can do it, you can do it yourself thing. This is a very spiritual process. And if anything, as Ohana Group leaders, I think the main thing is really to encourage everyone to not, and she says it the first session, she says it in her videos, and so, but it's not throughout. And I think it could very easily replace your own personal time with the Lord. So this is huge to make sure that it is paired together because it has to be filtered through the Holy Spirit. If you're doing it alone, it's like you, you like, Bring up all these spiritual, and it's a very spirit, like I explained, the first, the first day is a very spiritual process. It's a process with the Lord. You're saying, okay, God, I'm going to go through this 21 days with you. And then the next day, I'm like, see you later, God. I'm going to go do it myself. Like, I can do this. All right, healthy thoughts. Here we go. And it can become, even if your healthy thought is a scripture, which mine was. So even if your healthy training thing is a scripture verse that you're memorizing, it can still become you doing a self-help exercise. And it's not what it is. This is not what this brain detox is meant to be. It's meant to be a very spiritual process with the Lord. So um, when it came up for me, I asked a friend about it who I knew. Um, I found out she had started doing it. And actually, she started doing it and had quit doing it because um, she was coming from a really hurt place. And, um, and it was hard for her, so much so that she actually never completed the 21-day det detox because it just brought up so much that she couldn't handle and it made me think, because I, I had been hearing, you know, we're going to be doing this, this, this series, and I was excited about it. And then I went through it, and I'm like, oh, gosh, what's, <laughs> you know, what, what happens? Because we have people coming from so many areas of life. You have healthy, spiritually growing individuals who are just active in, the, in reading their word, active in journaling, active in, in ministry. And then you have others who are just coming into an Ohana group for the very first time, have never done daily devotions in their life, and have past hurts and trauma that could come up in this in this Ohana group series, right? So, and like Mark said, it could happen in any Ohana group series. So anyways, it, I guess my personal experience, I just, um, you know, we brought it, brought it up and it was just like, okay, this is just, I think what prompted us to be able to share something like this training where we know what to do. We know how to react in this, like I said, this happens with any series. So this is for future series as well. Um, but especially this one because it's about going, it's a really about going deep. I mean, it's like, meant to go down to deep, deep rooted things. Um, it's, it's gonna, it's gonna take a lot of, you know, just shepherding and praying with people and, and like you always do. Um, but also knowing what can we do next? If, if maybe a situation arises and we don't know what to do, okay, let's, let's move forward, you know, mm -hmm. and how can we do that? Well, yeah. exactly. So that's exactly why we're here. Um, it's to gain a better understanding of how to help the people we shepherd get the most out of this series. We don't want people to quit. We don't want people to fall off the boat. We want them to finish it and to experience transformation through revelation. And so, you know, in the moments where they may be feeling discouraged or feeling like quitting, mm -hmm. how do we come alongside them and shepherd them? And one of some of the things you heard was that we need to keep encouraging people, the people we shepherd, that this does not replace your time with the Lord, you know, because it is spiritual. It can very easily become just your spiritual activity for the day. But like she said, if you're not doing it with the Lord, it can become man-made, right? We need to encourage people not to do that. And then also, one of the things that she shared was, don't do it alone, mm -hmm. you know? Because I think when you started speaking with this other person and you were able to share your findings and experiences, it became more um, doable, mm -hmm. you know? And so, um, as leaders, encourage the people you lead to have an accountability person that they do yes. this with and can process some of these things with. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, especially if you're an Ohana group leader or even a ministry leader who oversees people who will be going through the detox, just contend for these things. And I think that that's the way that we'll get the most out of it. Mm -hmm. And like Pastor Mike shared, this won't be everybody's experience. Mm -hmm. Some people may deal with a toxic thought that doesn't drum up a whole bunch of emotions and trauma and, and stuff like that. But you, you never know, you know, it, it could happen. And so the purpose of our time together is when things like this arise, in the case of trauma or crisis, uh, three things. Um, first of all, how do we understand what our policy of confidentiality uh, means, okay? So we'll talk about that. And then here, this is important. When something comes up, how do we know when to help personally versus when to refer this case to somebody else. 
So what are the flags? What are the things we're looking for? And then finally, number three, um, when the flags do come up that, okay, this is something that is beyond our scope of leadership and training and ex expertise, how do we know what steps to take then to refer this person? So again, um, good things to know for any time, but uh, good things to know right now too as leaders. So um, Jaylee is gonna share first and foremost about what we mean when we talk about this culture or this policy of confidentiality. What are we talking about? Okay, so um, in our ministries, and you guys have all, I, I'm looking around the room, a lot of you have been leading Ohana groups way longer than we've been a part of an Ohana group. And we just started Ohana groups a few years ago, and we've seen the benefit of it. So you know, you know that a big part of Ohana group is creating a culture of trust and transparency, right? And um, I, I think that the biggest thing that we want to differentiate, though, is there's a boundary with confidentiality, right? There, there, there needs to be a safe place of trust and transparency, but everyone who walks into your home or the place that you meet needs to understand the boundaries of the confidentiality policy that you uphold as a leader in New Hope Central Oahu. So it needs to be made very clear. And maybe this is something that wasn't done before as, as I think, explicitly as this, but um, we pulled this actually from another training that was already given, I think, maybe to a lot of you already. But this, I believe, is extremely important to always, always bring up. Every, every time a new person walks in, the first meeting of every, of every um, series that we do, the, if, if you notice someone new comes in, just share it. It's something that needs to be part of your language as an Ohana group leader, just simply because when things pop up, then you have this to refer back to. If not, then it's like, well, wait, I thought what I said was, was confidential. Well, it is, except in these situations, yes, but you said it was confident. You know, you, you hear what I'm saying, right? So it needs to be clear, and the boundaries just need, need to be made clear. So um, do we have handouts? No. We didn't pass out the handouts. All right. So um, we put it up on the screen, but this file is available on CCB under Servant Leaders. You can go into the files and download this handout yourself. I would recommend that you do that um, so that you can have this verbiage uh, whenever you lead your, your ministry groups. Um, yeah. Yeah. My new hope. Oh, yeah. Okay, where's the, where's the jar? I got to put 25 cents in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. My new hope. Buy lunch or 25 cents. I don't know. One of those. Totally okay. Just, uh, yeah. All right. So this is the confidentiality policy. Yeah. You'll find it on my new hope. Yes. Dot <laughs> com. Um, okay, so read it, read it in your head as I read it aloud. Um, okay. It is important to communicate to your Ohana group or ministry members that all information shared during that time is to be maintained under confidentiality, with exception of seeking guidance from pastoral staff and situations where it appears someone is either hurting or may hurt another individual or themselves. Okay, that's the big part right there. If you're going to hurt someone else or you're hurting yourself, we have to share that. Um, the other one, though, is pastoral staff, guidance from pastoral staff. I mean, that's a big one. So we're going to talk about different situations in which that comes up. So I know there's probably like a lot of questions. Okay, well, what situations does this come up in? We're going to talk about that in the next section. But this is the policy. Okay, so this underlined section, when you pull it up in My New Hope, you're going to find it and copy and paste it in your notes on your phone so that you always have it and you can read it off anytime during <laughs> your Ohana group. Okay, because um, it. It, like, I can't stress it enough that it's important that we share this. I, um, as a counselor, now, I mean, obviously, it's a different situation. It's in a very um, confidential space. But as a counselor, I share this at the beginning of my session, the first session that I have with every person, so that I know anyone who's walked through my door has heard my confidentiality policy, which sounds a lot like this one. Um, and, and then I also give them a written one. But um, I think sharing it verbally anytime someone new comes in is just, I mean, it's just safeguarding. And it also, I mean, some, sometimes we may shy away from sharing stuff, something like this just because it's like, okay, that sounds a little bit serious. But sometimes whenever you share the boundaries and make them clear, it brings up more trust. It's like, okay, I understand this person is, they're a, they're a safe person to talk to. It's, it's, I can be transparent with this person, but I also know they have my best interest in mind. And if anything ever comes up, I know they're gonna share it with the right person. So it's, it, it just makes some, it's so clear. And it, it brings up a whole new level of trust as opposed to just, oh, it's fine. Everything you share, you're, you're safe. This is a safe place. Even if you just say that, it's so more, much more specific to share this. And they understand where the boundaries end and start. Yeah. So clearly the heart of this is that in our groups, ministry groups, Ohana groups, we're trying to create a culture of openness and transparency. 
to say that, hey, we're going to do life with each other for a season. These are the brothers and sisters that God has brought us with. And you can share things with them that maybe you wouldn't share with others. Why? Because everything you share will not leave this room, except for when this happens and you share. And again, you may think, oh, but that'll discourage them from sharing the really deep stuff. Actually, it frees them, as Jaylee shared, to say, okay, this is a safe place where I know that I can bring these things up. And mm -hmm. you'll find that people will share very openly. And that's, that's what we want. Mm -hmm. We don't want people to be surfacey with us in our ministry context. We don't want them to just feel like they can only just talk about, you know, shooting the breeze. We want them to feel like this is a place where they can find healing, especially if they're going through a crisis. And so um, mm -hmm. not only is this something that is good to share, it's something that as leaders at New Hope Central Oahu, we have to share, right? This is the policy because you represent New Hope Central Oahu and um, it, legally we have to communicate this, okay? And so at what point do instances come up when we can no longer just personally help and we need to refer? Well, we have a list here. Uh, these are some flags that as soon as they come up in conversation, boom, it's already caught your attention, okay? So anytime someone shares a situation of abuse with either themselves or another person, uh, suicide, depression or anxiety, eating disorders, addictions of any kind, already um, that should register on your radar that, okay, this is something I will need to refer to a pastor. That's why that was an exception. Guidance, right? Pastoral guidance. Or... Um, depending on the situation, you may even have to refer out to like a crisis hotline or a resource like that because the person is in what is called imminent danger, okay? So the way that we discern when, you know, someone is going through a situation like this is that, you know, some people may just share right off the bat, you know, who knows? They're, they're in such a crisis mode that they don't care and they just share with you what is going on. Most times it will come through relationship with the person where someone feels like, okay, this is a safe place. You're a safe person that I can share this with. Now, when a subject like this comes up, okay, so someone says, yeah, you know, I'm feeling a little depressed recently. You know, don't go into like depression. Okay, that was one of the flags. I'm calling a crisis hotline right now. You sit right here. No, what do you do? You, you ask questions, right? You get to the heart of it because some people throw words around all the time. You know, when they say they're depressed, maybe they just mean they're bummed out, right? So obviously, logically, we need to hear a little more, okay? So uh, you can write this down or, again, download this file. But when you want to determine the severity of the crisis, by the way, this is called triage, okay? If anybody's a firefighter or a first responder, when you arrive at the scene of a crisis or a trauma, you have to do something called triage, and that is where you assess the severity of the situation, okay? So you look for different things and you see, you know, what am I, what am I dealing with here? Okay, you will probably not have to deal with, you know, physical triage, but emotional and spiritual triage is a little harder to do because the wounds aren't on the surface, mm -hmm. right? So how do you do that? How do you assess the severity? You ask the right question, okay? And so very basically, through your conversation with this person, we all learned this line of questioning in elementary school, but very effective, the who, what, when, where, why kind of questioning, okay? So like, for example, someone shares uh, something that, that comes up. So who, okay, who is this crisis affecting? Who is being affected by this, okay? What, what is the nature of this crisis? What is going on? You know, share with me what's happening. When, how frequently does this occur? You know, um, if someone shares that they've had suicidal thoughts, okay, you know, when was the last time you thought that way? You know, how frequently does this happen? When was the last time that this crisis, you know, um, took place? Uh, and then how, you know, what usually brings it about? How is it usually triggered? You know, um, and then another very effective uh, line of questioning um, that is used in counseling as well is on a scale of one to 10. Okay, so when someone brings up a trauma, you can say, um, okay, so on a scale of one to 10, you know, how safe do you feel in this situation? Is it like one, I, you know, I feel pretty safe, like I don't think anything's really gonna happen, I just felt a little scared, or is it 10, like I'm afraid for my life, you know? Um, one out of 10, if it's an addiction thing, how much control do you feel you have over this area? How often do you experience, and, and so, the thing is that, you know, if someone brings up a trauma and you just say, oh, you know, well, how bad is it, you know? If you ask general questions, you will get general answers. Okay, we need to have boldness 
if we want to bring healing to ask specific questions. Because when you ask specific questions, you'll get more specific answers. And should you need to refer this person either to a pastor or to like, you know, a crisis intervention, then the answers they give you to these questions will help them in their healing journey. You will be able to give very specific answers to the pastor or leader or to the, the hotline, okay? So if imminent danger is perceived, you will have the questions to present, the answers to present. And so um, one of the uh, questions that I think came up is, you know, how do we refer? You know, how do we refer, like say, when do we know when to bring a pastor in? Okay, so um, or were you gonna touch on that in the next section? But that was one of the questions that came up. And um, one of the recommendations I think Pastor Earl shared last time was that when in doubt, and if you don't wanna breach this person's trust with you, then you can share anonymously with us. You know, just say, I'm journeying with somebody right now and this crisis has come up and we will, we will maintain the anonymity and we will say, okay, we'll ask questions and yeah, I've been asking them questions and this has been coming up. And if we perceive that, okay, this person is in imminent danger, mm -hmm. we may ask for them to be identified. But for the most part, if it's something that we feel like, okay, you're a leader, you know, you can shepherd this person through this, you know, based on what you've shared, I think, you know, just journeying alongside with them and stuff, then we don't need to know who the person is and you can maintain that confidentiality with them. Mm -hmm. But that kind of leads us to our next section of how to then it, when a crisis is perceived, take the next steps and what do you do in that, in that situation? Yeah, so I think everyone kind of does this um, to a certain degree in any situation, right? You're always kind of gauging, okay, what's the level of severity here, right? And um, like Dad kind of mentioned in the beginning, it's in any Ohana group setting, I mean, you, you guys have, have led Ohana groups, so I'm sure there have been situations or Ohana groups where something, red flags, popped up. Many times, nothing has popped up. Sometimes you've had to go out and talk to someone. So we just kind of made tier one, tier two, tier three, um, just to kind of organize it. It's something that you probably have been using in your head for many years, but it's just a way to look at it very clearly. So um, tier one, so first of all, generally speaking, and like Mark said, especially in this series, this is extremely important to have accountability. So um, if people are doing the detox, having partners to do it with, having someone that they can that can journey with them, you know, someone they can text every day, hey, today's a really hard day for me, you know, this has been really rough, like my healthy thought is not taking over yet, you know, and I'm my toxic thought is way bigger right now, it's still really huge, so, and you just need someone to pray with you, so just having that as just the groundwork is going to help so much. I think a big part of my personal experience, I was doing it alone, thankfully I had Mark to like process things through together with everything, but he wasn't necessarily doing the detox at the time, but um, I could process it with him, but not everybody has that. So having that within your Ohana group, if you're starting the detox, just having that is like a groundwork, right? Um, also, of course, the, the community of transparency, a, a community that you can talk about it together, right? That, that helps to have that in general. But then there's tier one. So tier one would be deeper accountability and follow-up discussions. So maybe someone in the group, you're seeing um, some things are highlighted a little bit more in the discussion time for them. Maybe it's a matter of you as a leader saying, hey, would you like, maybe we can talk about this throughout the week. You know, can, can I call you on Monday and we can talk about this? Or um, can I just text you throughout the week and we can talk, you know, know that I'm here for you to be able, to, basically you being maybe possibly as a leader, someone that could journey with them through the detox. If you see that it's just, okay, this is, might be a little bit harder for this person, okay? Um, so that would be one. Um, a tier one, right? Just a deeper accountability, deeper help through the process partnering with someone. Tier two would be seeking outside professional help. Okay, so that would be um, possibly, maybe maybe you see it. You see it pretty clearly, like maybe this person actually has a lot deeper, deeper needs and they need counseling. They've talked about maybe I should go see a counselor. Okay, then give them, you have a list on My New Hope. You can give to them and say, call these people. I, you mentioned going to counseling. I really agree with it. I think it would really help you. Here's the resources to do it. Help them, guide them through to go to the next steps to get that help. The other thing that Mark mentioned, maybe that's right at the beginning of tier two, is seek guidance from your pastor. So getting, and this isn't counseling. We wanna clarify, you're not getting counseling services 
from a pastor. Legally, they, we are, no pastors or counselors. Um, they are spiritual guide, guidance, right? Spiritual guidance is what you're asking for. So um, say you do that experience. So uh, like Mark mentioned, you have someone, you're not sure, maybe this is something I need pastoral guidance with. I don't really want to like tell the pastor all their like deepest darkest secrets, secrets just yet if I don't have to. Call them up. Just say, hey, I have a situation here anonymously. I have a situation here. Um, I have some questions. What do you think about this? Maybe they can just guide you in the right direction without bringing up any names or any specifics. Otherwise, maybe it's, you know what, I think we need to get together. I think it would be best if maybe the three of us got together with this person. Now, you don't just like come up with a coffee meeting with your person in your group and then the pastor shows up, obviously. <laughs> you guys, <laughs> you understand these things, right? You let them know, oh, oh, hey, look, the pastor just showed up. We should tell him everything. Like, no, you wanna talk to them first, right? And, and tell them, hey, I think, in the same way that I said, you know, you would tell them, hey, here's the list of counselors. So if you feel, okay, you've talked to the pastor anonymously, you say, I think we need to go deeper with the pastor. We need to get some spiritual guidance together. I can be there with you, but I really think that you need a little bit more than what I can give you. I don't feel qualified to help you through this, but I really believe that if you go to Pastor Mark, like you guys together could work this through and he could help you a lot better than I can. And you want me to meet with you? You know, just guiding them through to go on to someone who's who can help possibly. Um, so that, that would be tier two, right? So pastoral guidance or referring out to someone um, to a professional counselor. The third one is mandated reporting, okay? And we mentioned that, Mark mentioned the certain crises that are just like, okay, this is, someone's a harm to themselves or someone else. Suicide, if you have a question, it, you have to sleep at night, I think, is the biggest thing that I think, you know, whenever I was working in the school system or even as a counselor, I'm thinking, I'm like, I have to sleep at night. I have to know that I did everything that I could to make sure this person was safe. So if you have any questions, there's a suicide line that you can call, that they can call and refer themselves to. Okay, that's extremely important that we that we go and, and make that decision if, if you have any inkling of a, of a thought that that, that is possi a possibility. With abuse, I know for a fact that you can call the hotline and get consultation, anonymous consultation from an expert in, on the hotline. You can just call and say, this is a situation I'm having. I see a child that has this and this, or um, this person is saying this, and, and they'll let you know, okay, well, I, I think that it, it needs to get to this point for, for it to be worthy of referring, or yes, we'll take the referral. Right, they will help you through that. They're, ex they're the experts. So I did that a lot when I was working in the school system. I called the hotline all the time. Like, I mean, not all the time, but like a lot. I called the hotline just to be not like, about me. Yeah, I'm yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> about the children. Let me be specific. About the children. Um, but it, they can help. I mean, they can tell you, okay, this is this is what you need to do because you're not an expert necessarily. You're just a mandated reporter. So if a red flag pops up you refer, and then they can deal with that. They can get bring the right people to come in and look at the situation and say, okay, this is what we can do, these are the next steps. Does that make sense? I think a lot of time mandated reporting is really scary because people don't want to be like, I'm that person that called, or I did that, you know, or I'm like, gonna, no one's gonna share anything with me because I did that. No, it's it's not scary. It's actually safe, and it's it's the place it's a place where people will feel safe when they know that someone will take that extra step to make sure that they have the safety that they needed. So it really is a matter of, like we said from the beginning, creating transparency and trust, and always knowing that you're going to be that person. Like if no one else might be brave mm -hmm. enough to do it, but you'll call and you will make sure that they're safe. And mm -hmm. as a leader in our church, we we really expect that, and um, we're thankful for that. So, yeah. um, so that is, those are like the three tiers mm -hmm. with that. Um, yeah. So, um, like, like she shared, you know, when you call this hotline, the SWAT is not going to kick down their door and drag them out to like a, a rehab center. You know, you can call anonymously. They don't even have to know the person. You can explain the situation and they can guide you. It's free to call, you know? So when in doubt, if you have the slightest inclination, just call them and, and ask them if the situation is severe enough to warrant next steps, you know? Mm -hmm. You can do that free of charge, you can do that without them banging on their door, and you can get free advice from them anytime. And so, God forbid, you know, that these things happen, but we are a church after all. Mm -hmm. And so, I pray that people would feel that they can come and share these things and that they can find healing. Mm -hmm. And so, with that said, at the very end of the document that you can download um, is just a list of different services for uh, drug, uh, substance abuse, homelessness, domestic right. violence, uh, mental health counseling. Can I just point out a few? 
Oh yeah, if you want to go back so, up. To um, the top. Well, I just saw it right here. So oh, okay, yeah. New Horizons Counseling. If you guys don't, if you're not familiar with these, <laughs> I just wanted to point out a few. A lot of them I'm not even completely familiar with, but it was a resource that Pastor Lori actually passed out. So um, <laughs> I know it's great <laughs> if it's from her. Yeah. Um, but we also added on here um, New Horizons Counseling. Mark Taransky. I don't know if you guys are aware of him, but he actually is a certified addictions counselor. So I, myself as a counselor, I'm not a certified addictions counselor. There's a specific certification. It takes years to get, and he has that. So if I ever get someone in my office that is just beyond my scope of addictions counseling, I send them to him. So he, I mean, if, if ever there's any sort of addiction, I mean, I would say he's probably like the top. He's definitely the top on my list to refer out to. So just keep that in mind. I mean, like Mark said, we're, we're a church full of all sorts of different people from all sorts of different backgrounds. So these things pop up. So if they do, he's a really good one. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I just wanted to pop that, um, point yeah. that out. And if you yeah. see New Hope or um, New Central Oahu Hope Center, that's me. <laughs> but um, <laughs> well, a little that's my disclaimer. Disclaimer: I cannot it, because of dual relationships. I I cannot see people within our campus just because I'm seeing them every Sunday. I'm Mark's wife, who's a pastor, and it's it's just not it's not okay. Yeah, the confidentiality. It's just it's not good to be that in that close to someone who I would be counseling. Um, so I would refer out for that, but I mean, that doesn't, that means that saying that doesn't mean that necessarily Wahiwa or, um, or Haleiwa, because I'm, I don't remember, the, I mean, it's been a really long time since we went to those campuses. So it's not like we're always in those campuses. And um, I mean, I know you guys, the leadership from those, those campuses, but not necessarily the people that might come mm -hmm. for counseling. So just so you know, um, for people in Milani, mm -hmm. um, you might see Central Water Hope Center around there. I've referred a lot of people to Dr. Brian. Yes. Um, yeah, he's helped me personally mm -hmm. tremendously. So I refer everybody to him. Yeah. And um, yeah, I think there's a stigma when it comes to counseling and mental health that, oh, you gotta be way off the deep end. But really, I think all of us have things that we can work through, you know? And mm -hmm. sometimes we just need people beyond us to help us with a different perspective. And so uh, I, I recommend it, you know, wholeheartedly. You know, it's, it's been life-changing for myself. And even we got premarital counseling from him as well. So mm -hmm. it's a great resource to have, and it's a great resource to make available to others. And um, so you, you have the whole inventory there on the, on the file that, that you can download. And so, um, yeah, there's even Hualanapua for sex trafficking, if someone brings up a, a situation like that. And so all kinds of stuff. Hey, by the way, can you thank Ethan for doing an amazing job scrolling yeah, back there? Ethan. He's been our, our pro scroller. And uh, Les Lichtenberg is also yeah, the master yeah. of sound, so thank you. But um, this is the tool that we wanted to, to leave with you guys. We hope that, if anything else, you leave feeling a little more empowered that, OK, if something comes up, I don't feel like, oh, I don't know what to do. But now I know what the next steps are. And um, you know, for myself, before I knew what the next steps were, I tried to keep conversations kind of surfacy because mm -hmm. I didn't want big things to come up because I was scared because I didn't know what to do. Mm -hmm. you know? So when we know the steps to take, we will be more bold. We will be more empowered to feel like you, you can share anything with me because even if I can't help you, I can find someone who can. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, you know, we're going to point them to Jesus, you know, obviously. Mm -hmm. But we're going to surround them and bring them the support that they need. So with that said, um, does anybody have any questions? I'm not sure what time this was promoted as going until. Thank you. <laughs> but uh, time-wise, you know, we, we hope to not stay too long. I know we have some things going on. We, we got our softball team has to hit the field get and going. get training here. So, well, we wanted uh, just to open it up for discussion yeah, for discussion, anyone. I mean, I know these are questions. really tricky topics sometimes, mm -hmm. and obviously these aren't. We've had a full-on domestic violence training here at the church one time. It was mm -hmm. amazing. So yeah. there are, I mean, obviously each of those topics <laughs> yeah. could have a whole training in and of themselves of how you would react yeah. to it and how you would help someone through it. So this mm -hmm. isn't by any means an in-depth mm -hmm. discussion about that. Um, I. Yeah, we would be here all day if we wanted to talk about every single topic. This was just to give you the resources mm -hmm. that you may need. Um, and then, of course, you have the people that you can reach out to if ever something like that were to arise. But we wanted to just open it for mm -hmm. discussion and see, you know, questions, what you guys have, comments. Yes? So it's not really related to this, but um, <coughs> our Ohana group is a couple Ohana mm -hmm. group. Mm -hmm. So you talked about uh, pairing up and, mm -hmm. uh, for accountability. Would you recommend that they go guy guy instead of husband and wife. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes we're the issue, mm -hmm. not me and Joey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Of I course. Mean, not for us. No but. one thought that. No one thought that. <laughs> 
Yeah. I think it uh, would be um, probably case by case, as you discern, based on what you know about the individual. You know, mm -hmm. um, If you feel like the spouse well, is. I'm talking about actually going through the detox, the 21 detox. Yeah. Right, which you, which you say in Ohio, because if it's a couples Ohana group, you can't be like, everybody, couples pair up, except for you guys. Maybe we should. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. So I mean, if you feel like that's going to be maybe a possible issue, I think that if, you're, if that's coming Definitely. up for you, then maybe that it does need to yeah. be woman, you know, two women together, yeah. two men together. And I know that Mark's talked about that many times about, you know, just men being able to share when it's just men. Mm -hmm. It's so much more open, you know, and just having that, you know, just freedom to just. Yeah, because we're, we're part of a couples Ohana group too. And what I found is that in a mixed setting, people don't feel the freedom to share all the time because it's like, well, I'm dealing with something, but I don't want to share in front of all everybody, you know. Yeah. And so maybe partnering with another man or women, you know, they can be more open if they feel. But like I said, as a leader, you can discern that, you know, mm -hmm. if a couple are both strong, they're, they're going to defer to one another anyway. So for the sake of those who are new and maybe don't have that relationship yet, where they can deal and process with those things, maybe partner with them with like another brother or mm -hmm. sister, you know, would be good. Um, but yeah, that's a good question. A anybody else have any questions or, or insights? Yeah. That they want to share. If you've done the detox <laughs> <laughs> or any of this. Oh, okay. So if you go on My New Hope, <laughs> then you search for groups, uh, then you just type in um, Servant Leaders. It's a group called Servant Leaders because that's what we all are. And then if you go to Files, it'll be listed under the files as Crisis Management Handout or something like that. Uh, yes. Oh, okay. If you're at Wahiwa and you oh. can't find that group in Wahiwa, you won't find it. Because Omni groups have to be in Milwaukee. Oh. So, mm. But you have the ability to switch, right? There's yeah. a drop down menu. Switch to Milwaukee and then find the Omni group servant leaders. Ah. That's how you'll get to it. Thank you. Can you repeat that for the sake of the recording? Yes. So if you're trying to find uh, the file on My New Hope, and you're doing it from another campus, you have to use the scroll down menu and switch to the Milani campus because it's an omni group. And then uh, go look for uh, servant leaders, and you'll find it under the Milani uh, groups listing. That's good so to know. thank you. That's good to know. I didn't know <laughs> yeah. that, that it wasn't accessible from the other campuses. Yeah. Good question. Anybody else have any questions or comments? Okay, awesome. That said, pastors. Oh, they're all gone. Pastors? Okay. <laughs> oh, yes, I used you too. Yes, you're here. <laughs> <laughs> Any, anything else we need to know just about the brain detox specifically as we prepare? Or? Yeah, do you have any insights on that, Pastor Teresa? Yeah. Anything I know you guys should? have been going through the class and stuff. Um, <clears throat> Oh. Yes. <laughs> wow, this is getting really formal. Please bring a microphone to the woman in this aisle over here, please. She has a question. <laughs> okay, so as Ohana group leaders, as ministry leaders, you're going to inevitably have people in your groups that won't do the detox. Mm. Okay? or they're gonna do the detox and they won't be consistent in doing the detox, okay? So what you wanna do is lovingly encourage them to just keep going. So just think of Dory, just keep swimming, <laughs> just keep swimming, just keep swimming, because there is light at the end of the 21 days. Mm -hmm. But like Jaylee was saying, the first week to two weeks is extremely challenging if a person is not used to self-reflection. Right? Some people naturally do self-reflection, they self-evaluate. Other people, they don't know how to self-reflect and don't like to think about their stuff. And So as a leader, just encourage them to keep going, mm -hmm. even if they don't feel like they're getting no result. Because after day three, and the, what she said was important, having a partner, I was getting nothing. Okay, here I am, a pastor. I self-reflect all the time. I'm like going, what is wrong with this? And it was just making me angry. <laughs> I was just getting more angry doing this detox. And so I had to call my sister-in-law. 
I'm like, okay, you need to come over to my house now. I'm just <laughs> irritated. And I had to talk it out with somebody else. And then it wasn't until maybe day seven that I started feeling like I was getting mm -hmm. some positive traction. Yeah. But the first seven days were the most difficult, I think. So mm -hmm. just know that going into the 21 day detox, you want to finish, encourage them, smiles, love. You can do this. I believe in you. Let's talk it out. We're going to get past this seven day mark and then you're going to start feeling some victory on the other wow. end of it. That's good. Yes. That's good insight. That is very good. Okay. Yeah, I have Something too on, on the other aspect. Um, my thought was, because it's a day-to-day -day thing, is you have a tendency to want to stick it out. But what came up in my spirit all the time was don't get too legalis legalistic about it. If you skip a day, it's OK. Mm. Just move on. Yeah. But because you're doing 21 days, you want to do it every day. Because yeah, yeah. that's personalities like that. You want to go boom, 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 boom. But it's OK, because mm. you got to find your groove. Because mm -hmm. I was a morning person. But if you can't, because you're rushing in the morning, do it at night. <coughs> or skip a day, whatever. But mm. don't get that tendency to mm. be all beat yourself up That's just good. because Great. you miss a day. Yeah. Very good. Um, that is awesome. Exactly. <laughs> all of that, yes. And you'll experience that when you go through it. Yes. It's like I, I I had a similar experience the first week was like trudging through mud. The second week I was like, yeah, this is awesome. And then the last week I'm like, skipping here a day and there, there. And like, it took me like, I think it took me 30 days to do the full 21 days. But I also, like I shared with you after that first week, I realized, whoa, wait a second. I'm not doing my personal devotions here. And so, so there were some nights when, I, cause I had to do it at night cause I have a baby that wakes up really early in the morning. And I was like, can't do mornings anymore. So I do it at night. And there were some nights where I only had the energy to do my devotions. And it was like, gotta choose one. Okay, I'm doing my devotions. Cause I'm, I, I made it a point after the first week, I will not move to a page of journaling for 21D Detox until I've done a journaling of my own with the Lord, just me and the Lord. So I couldn't move forward <laughs> without that. So it's like, you have to keep it, keep it going, no matter what, just keep going, but do it at the pace that, that hmm. you can do it yeah. at. So that, that's exactly something, something good that um, Chemo from Wahiba Campus shared mm. last week. Uh, when we did the training was that when you think of a detox, right? Like if you've ever gotten a massage or something like that, they're needing your muscle tissue, they're needing your body and your, and your joints and all that stuff. And what are they doing? They're doing, they're releasing the toxins that get trapped in your body from the foods that we eat and the pollutants in the air and all that stuff. But those toxins are getting released into your bloodstream. And so what they always encourage you to do is to drink a lot of water mm -hmm. because that's how you flush the toxins out. Yes. So what this detox is, it's, it's like a deep tissue massage on our spirits and our souls. And it's good because we want to get the toxins out. We don't want them to stay there, but we need to flush them out, mm -hmm. right? And that's why this is not a self-help thing. We need the spirit of the Lord. He's yes. the living water to come and flow through us and help us to rid ourselves of these toxic thoughts and pollutants from our life. And so it's, we, it's such a spiritual exercise. We can't stress that enough. And by the way, you know, I don't, please, let's not leave here thinking like, okay, everybody brace yourself. You know, we got this gnarly series coming up. <laughs> the series is going to be freedom. You know, the series yes. is going to be awesome for people. That's why we're doing it because we want to transform our minds. We don't want to keep the stinking thinking, you know, going on. And so Romans 12, you know, we want to be free, but you know, stuff will come up. And, and so, but we get to shepherd people through this. So it's going to be exciting. And this is just good stuff to know anytime, you know, we go through anything. So with that said, um, if there aren't any more questions, Please download the resource. You can look over this material on your own time. And um, thank you guys for joining us this afternoon. I hope you have a great 4th of July week. And mm -hmm. God bless you guys. Thanks for coming. <laughs>